Christians. I do believe in once saved, always saved. And here's why. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So the Bible says that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. In the, in, the, in the verse prior to that, verse 29, it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Um, and and so the verses prior to that, it talks about not stealing. It talks about not giving place to the devil. It talks about not letting your anger, go, the, the sun go down on your anger. And so it's naming all these sins, right? And then it says, But grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby or because of the fact that you're sealed unto the day of redemption so according to this passage of scripture when you sin you don't you grieve the holy spirit but he's sealed inside of you but he's sealed inside of you because the bible says in first corinthians it says that the holy spirit is the earnest of our salvation in other words um earnest money when you buy a house you put down earnest money that's a promise to the to the seller that you're going to buy the house well god says his earnest to us his promise to us is the holy spirit of god and so, which by which we are sealed unto the day of redemption and when we, until we go to heaven, right? So, this is one reason out of many verses in the Bible of why I believe that you cannot lose your salvation for any reason. What if you murder someone, okay? Let's look at that. David murdered someone in Psalm chapter 51, um, David's prayer to God, um, after he murdered and committed adultery, uh, he told God, he said, restore unto me. The joy of my salvation. He didn't say restore to me my salvation. He said restore to me the joy of my salvation. So even David didn't lose his salvation. And that is verse number, let's see, I'm looking it up right now. That is verse number 12 of Psalm 51. He says restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. So David didn't lose his salvation, but he did lose the joy of his salvation. So once saved, always saved is biblical. It is Bible. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, both near and far. This is Trevor with Dying to Live for Jesus. And it is my mission to seek the once saved, just as James chapter 5, 19 and 20 tells all Christians to make it their mission to seek after the once saved, who may not always be saved because they have wandered away from the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and now are in real danger of spiritual death. So today... Uh, I'm doing a response to a video that is in support of Once Saved, Always Saved, the clips that you just saw uh, from a guy named Brandon Bowser, who, by the way, appears to have disabled the comments on his videos, so I was not able to, uh, to message him or anything like that. But he made a video centered around his best evidence for the doctrine of Once Saved, Always Saved, and that's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 which reads, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And there are uh, there's an interpretation he gives right here that includes the idea that the Holy Spirit cannot be removed. The Holy Spirit is sealed inside of us. And the main thing I want to show in this video is that if this verse is referring to our salvation being sealed by the Holy Spirit, it cannot simultaneously be referring to the Holy Spirit himself as being sealed. Okay, so the Holy Spirit himself is the seal. In this verse, it's not speaking about the Holy Spirit being sealed. So, the, so this verse is not saying that the Holy Spirit is sealed inside of us. So let's take, for example, a simple analogy using a pickle jar, which includes the base portion of the pickle jar and the lid on top, which is the seal and the contents, which are being preserved by the use of the seal. If it was just a jar without being a sealed jar, it wouldn't be preserving those pickles, not at least for the intentions of the manufacturers. So if you tell somebody that those pickles are good for five years. Nothing can contaminate those pickles for five years because of the seal, because they are sealed by the seal. That would be a true statement. But so if that person goes and takes and opens the pickle jar and just leaves it in a room with the seal broken for a shorter period of time than five years, 
And then they look at that and they see that the pickles have been contaminated. They have flies in them or something. Then that's that wouldn't make it an untrue statement that they were sealed. They were sealed. But that's not saying that the seal itself can't be broken because it's not making any statement about the seal, it, whether or not it can be broken. Now, so there's going to be the argument of whether or not the Holy Spirit can be taken away. But my point here in this video is this scripture doesn't make any statement about the Holy Spirit being able to be moved. And the only statement it's making about something being sealed is what's being sealed by the Holy Spirit. But it's not making any statement about whether or not the Holy Spirit can be removed. So what's very interesting about this video by uh, Mr. Bowser is that he goes on to point out probably the best passage in the entire Bible for evidence that the Holy Spirit can be removed, but he doesn't reference it. He actually ref references only the very verse after that, and he does not read Psalm 51 verse 10 after uh, King David had committed some egregious sins that were requiring repentance. He says to God, he makes this request to God, and he says, Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. This is a genuine request that David makes in the Spirit to God, not to take away the Holy Spirit. But what's interesting is Brandon reads the next verse, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And he presents this as a genuine request from David for the joy that has been taken away to be restored. So he understands that in this very verse that David is making an, uh, a truthful request of something that he genuinely believes may or may not come back to him. My point is he's... He, he understands that David is making a genuine request to God. So why is he not being consistent with this in the very verse before that? Why is he not seeing that King David is making a genuine request to God of something he knows may or may not happen involving the removal of the Holy Spirit? Why would David be praying to God for him to not take away the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit just can't be taken away because he's sealed inside of you or because uh, the Holy Spirit can't be taken away from David because he has eternal security, as most once saved, always saved believers will, will say, especially considering the very next verse after that, if we're being consistent, shows uh, in the opinion of once saved, always saved believers that this item, the joy of salvation, may or may not be returned. It's a genuine request that David has. As we also see the clear link between uh, the removal of the Holy Spirit and salvation in that same verse, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. So it's understood that if the Holy Spirit does leave and becomes taken away from David, he would be casted from the presence of the Lord. It's understood even here that the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of his salvation. Okay, so my question towards any, anybody who believes that they cannot lose their salvation, they believe eternal security, is are you making your genuine requests to God in accordance with Scripture? Do you ever pray to God uh, in a moment of... Um, conviction, when you're being corrected spiritually, uh, you've been backsliding, you've been caught in a state of disobedience in accordance with possibly being cut off or removed from the fellowship. Do you ask God not to take the Holy Spirit from you? Do you ask him not to cast you from his presence, to cut you off? Do you ask God not to do those two things? Okay, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Don't cast me from your presence. Uh, but it's interesting that verse after that, restore to me the joy of your salvation, could easy, easily be seen as, Lord, don't take salvation away from me, which would be very similar to what he says right before that, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. 
don't cast me from your presence. Right in line with that is don't take away salvation. But no, that's definitely not what he's saying. But I just want to ask you that question. Do you ever ask God not to take the Holy Spirit from you? Do you ever ask God not to cast not to cast you from his presence? If you're not doing that, you shouldn't be able to claim that David had eternal security. Okay, because you believe you have eternal security and you don't ask for those things. So how can you say David had eternal security when he does ask for those things? So uh, just to uh, just to recap or to explain a little bit more on the function of the Holy Spirit is that when we believed in Jesus, we were given the Holy Spirit. And because we've been given his spirit in accordance with believing in Jesus by faith, we are guaranteed eternal life through believing and the Holy Spirit that comes from it. But it is required of us to continue in the faith of the Lord Jesus. And if we don't do that, after many warnings, the Holy Spirit will eventually be taken from us and we will lose our salvation. Not everybody who once believed is an eternal elect child of God, but all that are elect children of God will persevere in the faith. That means they won't just once believe, they'll believe through the duration of their lives. And if they do uh, enter into a state of unbelief, um, a sealing of their eyes, which is interesting, that's ironic. The Bible talks about the, the prophets of old, their eyes being sealed. Let's fast forward to the Apostle Paul, whose eyes were sealed. What happened? That seal was broke. Okay, so that's a scriptural example of a seal being able to be broken. But if you enter into a state in which you've fallen back into unbelieving ways, God is unfathomably patient and able to bring you back from that. That's why repentance is known as a gift, a great gift. But for those who have wandered away from the Lord and are being confronted and convicted and are still refusing to return, they're letting that gift go cold and they are indeed rejecting the blood of Christ of which they have once been participated in the benefits of in the Holy Spirit. They have been partakers of the Holy Spirit, but not eternal uh, inhabitants, not, not internally being indwelled by the Holy Spirit. They have given it up. Look at Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. We cannot ignore such a great salvation as this. Um, we've got to be very watchful. Okay, all of Jesus's parables were not spoken in vain. If he comes back like a thief in the night, just like he warned Peter, and Peter is, uh, is smacking around the servants, then he's going to put him in hell. That's what Jesus said to Peter. Okay? But the scripture's already been written. We know that didn't happen with Peter. But if this is what Jesus says to you as an, in, as an individual, you should believe him. Okay, if he says to us that we can lose our salvation, if he says to us that um, some will believe for a while and in the time of temptation fall away, or if he tells us just like he told Peter in Luke chapter 12, make sure you're not beating, beating the men servants and maid servants when I return, disciple of mine, believer of mine because I'm going to chop you into pieces and put you in hell if I do, okay? Uh, just as Paul tells the believers in Galatians 5, 21, those who are making a practice of sin, i.e. beating the men servants and maid servants, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And he warns them, just as Jesus warned us. Okay, so if you just take Scripture in totality, Yes, the Holy Spirit whom we have received, who is the seal of our salvation, if we reject Christ, the Holy Spirit will leave and we will no longer be sealed. And he has the ability to seal us all the way until that day because he's a seal, okay, just as the pickle jar. It's going to keep those pickles preserved all the way for the whole five years that it was created to do it. 
But if the seal is broken, then it's not going to do that. Okay, so the Holy Spirit seals us all the way until the day of Christ Jesus. But don't turn away from the faith. If you turn away from the faith, the seal will be broken. The Holy Spirit will leave you and you will go to hell. Come Lord Jesus, amen.